Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about what I feel the Z8 needs to bring to the table in order to surpass its competition. So let's get started. There are a lot of rumors about the Nikon Z8 and what it's expected to bring to the table. As someone who recently went over to Sony and started shooting with the Sony A7R5, this camera has been touted as being one of the competition for the new Nikon Z8. The Canon R5 and R5C are cameras that people speculate are ones that it's going to be in competition with. I think more likely it's going to be the R5 II more so than the R5C. But we know Nikon stated that they're going after video for the next batch of cameras, so maybe there'll be a cinema version? Who knows? It's only speculation at this point. As someone who's been shooting with the A7R5 for the last couple of months, I think I have some ideas of what Nikon can bring that will surpass this camera. While this camera is great in what it does, there's some areas in which it could do better. And I feel the reason why Sony didn't go to the next level is because they already have an A1 and an A9 that can handle some of those features. So let's talk about some of the things that I would like to see from this Z9. And I made a list, so I wanna take a look at that as I keep talking about what's going on here. So first and foremost, as far as the sensor, people are speculating that this camera should have a 60 megapixel sensor or 50 megapixel sensor. This being a 60 megapixel sensor, it's pretty large for photo and for people who do landscape and so on, uh, studio work, I think it's a good sensor for them to use. Now, that being said, if you are someone who's looking for a hybrid camera, you may not want that level of resolution in your camera. So let me give you what I think would be a better compromise. The same 45 megapixel from the Z9. And I know a lot of people saying, you know, why you use that? Think about it for a second. Nikon spent the money to get sensor developed and brought out into the Z9. Why wouldn't they use it in another camera in their lineup? Considering the features that it has, I personally like video features. I know a lot of uh, photographers are thinking about the photo features, but you know, I think Nikon is gonna make this camera a really focused camera, and I'll tell you more as we go along, but let me give you the specs that I'm talking about. So, same 45 megapixel sensor, same XP7 processor, because I think taking that out of the Z9 and putting in the Z8 will give it some really good photo features as well as they can improve on the video features. On the photo side, I think they should dome it down a bit, give it some less specs than the Z9, because we don't want it to be on the same level as the Z9, and of course Nikon wouldn't do that to cannibalize their sales. However, if you're gonna cannibalize sales, it's better to do it with your own product line, right? So, 14 megapixels raw stills, uh, 40 megapixels in JPEG mode. You hold the shutter down, you can fire 40 megapixels if you need to. Um, sorry, you hold the shutter down, you can fire 40 frames per second, you know, if you want a whole bunch of JPEG. So it kind of gives it a bit of a sport mode. Slightly lower buffer than the Z9, again, not to encroach on what the Z9 can do. Electronic shutter up to 116,000 per second. Z9 is 132,000 per second. And a blackout free viewfinder. I think we'll appreciate that on a camera that if you're gonna shoot some sporting events and so on, that will be helpful. Now, for me, that's pretty much what I'd like to be on the photo side. If you're someone who's looking for something more, put in the comments, let me know what you like on the photo side, and we can discuss it in the comments. On the video side, this is where I think the camera is going to ramp up its features. So the Z9 already come with um, 12-bit internal RAW, and it also does 4K internal ProRes HQ to um, 30 frames per second, but I think on the Z8, they can go up to 60 frames per second. This is my thought. 16-bit um, uh, external output if you need to have a recorder. If they give it the same 12-bit internal RAW recording like the Z9, that's like next level awesome right there. Um, they may not, again, they don't want it to really go at the same level as the Z9, but if they wanted to make a camera that video people would appreciate, they could do that. Not everyone wants an external recorder. Some people do, 
And of course, it's going to depend on the size of the body. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I think those features should be there. If they're not there, you know, it's okay. 12-bit internal RAW, most of us are not shooting that right now on our cameras. But again, if it's capable, that means it's going to go up against the Canon camera, which is, you know, Canon R5 is really great as far as 8K recording and ProRes recording because, you know, I think Canon is really who they're going to go after more so than Sony. Sony is there, but the A1, I think the A1 doesn't have similar features to the Canon either, but it's uh, due for an update, so who knows what it's going to bring. But I think Nikon should surpass that in what they're going to bring for the Z8. Okay, so of course, 10-bit recording. We've been dying for that on Nikon cameras, 10-bit internal forwards internal that'd be great as well um, improved audio preamps rolling shutter that you know the Z9 has really good rolling shutter we need to make sure the Z8 has really good even improved than the Z9 if they can possibly do that with the XP set processor so that's something to keep in mind um, 4k 120 with sound with sound um, 8k 30 if they know you know 8k 24 I think that'll be fine. This camera does 8 bit 24 frames per second, but it's 420 10 bit, not 422. But I figure if you're gonna have all the um, raw codecs built in, ProRes, and so on and so forth, the Z9 capability should be, the Z8's capability should be also similar to this, but with 10 bit video or 12 bit if Nikon like, wants to go to the next level and the 8K. They may not do it, that probably requires more cooling. Um, and as we talk about cooling, I guess it's a good time to jump into the body. If the Z8 is a chopped body Z9, that means it's gonna be a taller camera, which I think would work if you're gonna put a bigger battery inside of it. All these additional recording codecs are going to require a larger battery to run um, this camera. And having a larger battery, I think you can do things such as an HDR screen and an HDR viewfinder. We are having the capability to record those things, but the screens are not at that level. So if they can do that with a screen, that would be great. Oh, screen, hmm, for me, four inch four inch multi-angle flip screen okay we need that on the video side it seems like it's a thing that you know photographers hate and i can tell you not having it um i wanted it because like sitting here right now recording myself as a one-man shop i can see what's going on in the screen i can tell the thing is tracking my face audio is working the red um bar around the screen is there it's recording. Of course, the recording lights on this camera. This is the FX30, by the way, and it has lights pretty much all over to let you know when you're recording. So having you know some of these things in the Z8 would be great. Multiple recording lights is a great thing. It should have it as well. Oh, and a button on the front so I can you know push it right there and start recording just like I do on the uh, FX3. So in talking about all these additional features. Um, Part of my mind is like they should make it a box camera or something similar like this FX3, FX30 rather. Well, FX3 is the style body, but you know, it needs to be wider, bigger, you know, having a bigger screen, you're gonna need more real estate on the back to do it. We know Nikon has been using a 3.2 inch screen for the, quite a big while now, but the screen actual real estate is bigger than that. And there's a big black bar around the screen. If they can get rid of the black bar and you know stick it out a little bit more, you're talking maybe maybe not even four inch. That'll, you know, you can probably be at 3.6, 3.8, whatever it is, slightly bigger. So when you're recording, you also can push the information to the top and the bottom, and you can have that free area for just the image. Okay, pooling. The Z9 records up to 8K 30 for two hours. If you make the body of the Z8 smaller, you're going to need to find some way to dissipate the heat. If you're going to have a long recording like on the Z9, which they probably won't, I think it'd be better off having a fan built in. This thing doesn't have a fan built in. If you record in a warmer temperature, it warms up, especially 8K. Most people are not going to record 8K, but at least 4K, you know, for a long period of time, it's going to get warm if you're hand holding it. And let's be realistic, not many people are going to be hand holding a camera for 
hours to record. It's just not gonna happen. So I think at least some cooling to the camera doesn't shut down. Panasonic gave us um, fans in the top for the S5 II Lumix camera. Nikon could do something like that as well. Or, you know, in my estimation, looking at the thickness of this camera, if Nikon beefs up the size of the Z8, make it a bit thicker, you can put some better um, heat sinks inside of it. And of course, if it's taller, that's more area in the camera to dissipate the heat. So, you know, that's something you can look at. Um, more log recording modes. I mean, N-Log, I tried it on my Z6 II on the Ninja, and it's a little bit hard for me to grade. Granted, I wasn't an expert. I'm still learning now. A lot of the grading stuff but uh, sony has a um tone feature it's basically a dummy cinema mode but basically it gives you like a cinema look just flip the switch over there and you know if you don't want to do any grading you can get really good looking um, images out of your camera cinematic as they call it the nikon images come out of the camera looking great but i think on the movie side of things people like something a little bit different um in grading sony images right now i'm seeing how having these extra modes can help so you know nikon something to consider you guys let me know if there's something that you want in a nikon or if you've shot um analog and it works fine for you and the grading is easy you know put that in the comments backlit buttons Four thousand dollars plus tax, thirty-nine. No backlit buttons. I'm like, what the heck? You know, the things you discover after you buy the camera that you didn't even think about. Yes, I'm more video focused these days, but I still shoot photos when I want to, and if I want to shoot something at night, here's something this is lacking. No screen up top to check your info. No lighted buttons on the back. You know, so you can see what's happening. If I want to just focus and turn off the screen, you know, preserve your nighttime vision when you're shooting Astro stuff, it's nice to have some buttons back there that you can, you know, focus my buttons and at least have a little screen plot you can check that it's not, you know, bright up the light and then you have to readjust your eye. So, yeah. Lighted buttons, backlit buttons. That should be on the Z8 as well. Full size HDMI port. The Z9 has it, then I can, can put that in on the Z8 as well. One of the other things that I think the Z8 should benefit from is the Nikon Z9's shutter shield. That helps prevent dust getting into the sensor. We don't have it on our Z6, Z7 cameras, but that's something that we definitely would need. And if we're going to go similar to the Z9 as far as shutter performance, well, sensor performance, then take out the mechanical shutter. You wouldn't really need it. The Z9 doesn't need it. We already talked about the blackout uh, free screen. So if you're gonna have all that feature, keep everything in the, in the Z8, you know, in my mind, sends aside, it should be pretty similar. Certainly cut back some of the features that we don't really need on the video side. I don't want them to do like the uh, Canon with the R5C and do a mode where you go from video to um photo mode i mean you know sometimes i think about it and i think it's okay but it's okay only if the camera boot up time isn't long because my understanding is on that canon camera it takes a while when you flip the switch for the video for the camera to basically boot into the separate os and um start the video side i know photo guys are going to want this camera as well nikon is not going to do only video well, Nikon's not gonna do video only. It's not like this FX3 that I'm recording on where Sony basically chopped out the majority of the folder features to give you a video camera. I mean, if Nikon does that, that would be too bad, you know? Single frame shooting, so on and so forth. Maybe not single frame, 10 frames per second instead of the 20 that I was saying before, or 40 if you are doing high speed stuff. Because if you're trying to make this Z8 a more video focus camera then yeah you, it doesn't need to have like serious photo capabilities and i think it would satisfy uh guys who are shooting landscape and guys who are shooting studio stuff plus also do some video work let me know if there's anything i missed i'm curious to hear what you guys are thinking that's my wish list for the nikon z8 i'd love to hear what you guys are thinking anyway remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel I'll see you in the next one.
Remember, we don't want this camera to go up against the Z9 directly, but we want it to have some amount of 